Welcome Gold participants from around the world. I'm Fleur Bickford, Program Director and MC for Gold Midwifery. I'm here today talking with Laurel Wilson, who will be presenting about the science of the mother-baby bond, how attachment impacts epigenetics, brain development, and stress. So Laurel, thank you so much for being with us. We're thrilled to have you with us as part of Gold again this year. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here again. I love gold. <laughs> and we love having you. <laughs> so I know we've, uh, you know, we've talked with you before um, about uh, your background as an IBCLC and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. a little bit of a different question for you today. I, in your bio, you mentioned that you have two grown sons and that you had somewhat of a difficult birth experience with them that led you on a path towards helping emerging families create positive experiences. So I'm wondering if you can just tell us a little bit about your experiences with your own sons and the impact that that had on your work. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, with my first child, I, I gave birth um, overseas. My husband and I were in the military and we lived in Guam. And we actually moved to Guam in the midst of um, post a huge typhoon. And um, it was a very, it was just a very stressful situation to be moving away from my family and be moving to this new environment and to an environment that had just been um, affected by a huge disaster. And during that time of my pregnancy, we experienced several more typhoons during my pregnancy. And my actual birth was also very challenging and um, I wound up with kind of a forced cesarean section that I, to this day, still don't feel was, was required. And um, it led to the separation of myself and, and my son for, for quite some time in the postpartum experience. And all of these experiences, even through every single stressful experience, I had this sense that because I was feeling so stressed during this time that I needed to really forge a deep bond with my child in utero because somehow even at that very young age I knew that that attachment between my child and I was going to be very important to his health and to our future bond and that turned out to be very very important and with my second child I also had a very challenging I had a, a VBAC experience which turned out to be um, incredibly challenging and probably a little bit even more traumatic than my cesarean section was and I still had that focus on um, you know the the bond the attachment um, for continuing this long-term relationship with my children and even more so making sure that that bond helped me to create the best environment possible for them so that they could be the healthiest children that they could be. I had this real focus on that. And after their birth, I discovered doulas and I discovered the Leche League and I discovered all of these support systems that I had no idea existed while I was in the throes of pregnancy and birthing and having very young children. And it really led me on a path to becoming an advocate for for my children and later on in life it led me to really look at what happens to the child prenatally based on the mom's environment and experience and um, and really how attachment changes everything for that child. Okay, thank you so much Laurel. I, uh, you know, I think unfortunately the, the experience that you had is you know, unfortunately very common and I think there's a lot of us that have kind of had that experience where, you know, birth hasn't really um, been ideal and we kind of, we learn about all of the, the supports and resources after the fact. I know it was Later. the same for me as well. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about your experiences but I, at the same time I'm, you know, pleased that it's kind of brought you to this point of sharing your knowledge and your wisdom um, and, you know, doing these presentations and writing books and I think it's wonderful that you're, you know, taking those experiences and uh, helping to make sure that other mothers don't have the same experience. So thank you so much for sharing that. Absolutely. I look back now at those experiences and instead of seeing them as, um, you know, in a negative light, I do see them kind of as the beginning of this path that I took with my children and with all of the families and the professionals that I've worked with for all of these years. So I'm very grateful for those experiences now. I don't, I don't see them, I see them as challenging, but I don't see them as negative at all. 
Yeah, and that's wonderful. So now let's uh, just switch gears a little bit and talk a little bit about your upcoming presentation. I'd love it if you could just give us a little bit of a sneak peek. You're going to be talking about attachment in epigenetics. Mm -hmm. And I know epigenetics is a little bit of an emerging field and you know some people are still a little bit unclear as to what epigenetics actually is. So maybe you can just tell us a little bit about that and just kind of why you decided to focus on attachment in epigenetics. Sure. So the epigenome is actually um, how our environment interacts with our DNA and causes certain genetic traits to either turn on or off. So what we now know is only about 1 to 2 percent of our DNA of our genes um, manifests, manifests itself without any environmental play. So only 1 to 2 percent of our disease origin relates directly from our DNA. Most of how we become an individual and our personality and our long-term health and even our current health um, expresses itself based on the environments that we live in and our emotional states and our stress states, our nutritional states. So um, the epigenome is we're now finding is pretty critical to how healthy we are. And what's really interesting about the epigenome is that it tags our DNA. And we're finding now that that tag, um, some of those tags can affect our future children and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren. They leave kind of legacies of our life for future generations. And so how we live our lives today becomes really important to um, the future of the world, essentially. And through the study of epigenetics, I, I am a lactation consultant and I absolutely love breast milk and breastfeeding and that whole aspect, but I became really interested in what's happening with the baby in utero um, during that period of development. The period of zero to three is what we now consider kind of a critical period of development long term for the child's health, um, brain development, and personality development. And that zero to, you know, 10 month essentially period of an individual's life when they're being conceived and created inside of their mother's body really changes a lot for them. And what many people don't know, what a lot of moms don't really recognize is that what's going on in their life their relationships and their emotions, their heart states, what they're eating and how they are emotionally bonding to their child is actually changing that child's epigenome. <laughs> it's, it's changing that child's brain development and it is setting that child up to, um, to best um, interact within the environment that it's being born into. So for me, it's just an incredibly important period of time between the mom and the baby and that forge and that bond between mother and baby that attachment it's it's not just kind of a nice thing to have we now know that it's a pretty important piece of our health puzzle to have that attachment because we know that what's going on during that period of time will impact whether or not a baby receives breast milk. It changes breastfeeding for us and it changes how we um, interact with our children when they're born and it changes our the dynamics of our family, um, which all of those things we now know are interacting with our epigenome. So uh, for me it's a fascinating subject and I'm really excited um, I'm really excited to share some of the details with all of those interesting things that are happening to the baby and what's going on between mom and baby at kind of a molecular level. Okay, it sounds fascinating and to me it's kind of one of those topics where it's it's fascinating and at the same time it's almost a little bit kind of overwhelming and scary to think about, <laughs> you know, the impact that, you know, we have you know just what we're doing during pregnancy and the impact that that can have on the baby it's a little bit overwhelming to think about but at the same time it's fascinating to learn about and to realize that you know we actually have the ability to perhaps change you know how things happen for our babies which right. is kind of exciting so it's definitely a really well, interesting field 
Yeah, and one of the things I, I like to make sure, when, I, when I'm speaking to professionals, I'm giving a different level of information and I'm sharing with moms because the last thing you want mothers to come away with is this feeling of impending doom and stress yeah. because they're stressed <laughs> out. You know, you, you can't change you, you cannot change how the world is reacting around you or, or what's going on in the world around you. But what you can teach mothers to do is learn how to how to react to the situations in her life. And that can change her stress level enormously. You know, we may not be able to change these stressors, but we can change our reactions to them. And we can learn how to remove certain stressors from um, or eliminate how our body is responding to certain stressors. And we can also learn how to make better decisions nutritionally. And there are a lot of little things that we can do that really can make a long-term fantastic impact. And the other great thing is that babies are enormously plastic, which is which is another beautiful thing. So that we actually, they have a life, you know, an entire life to change and express their epigenome. It's just that zero to three period is very, very plastic and very moldable. Um, but even if even if we have a stressful event or something that happens in pregnancy, it doesn't mean it's it's the end, you know, for our children in terms of their emotional health. Um, in fact, sometimes we know that those those small stressors, especially when responded well to, can actually help with emotional intelligence for our children. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it's wonderful, Laurel. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. Um, really looking forward to, you know, hearing more from you during your actual presentation. So mm -hmm. for those of you who are listening, you'll be able to hear more from Laurel on March 1st at 2200 UTC. So we look forward to having you join us online then to hear more about the science of the mother-baby bond, how attachment impacts epigenetics, brain development, and stress. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Goodbye for now.